Hi, third graders. Today's goal in reading is I can infer the author's message in a nonfiction book. Before we can really take a look at this, we need to make sure that we understand what it means to infer. When we infer or make an inference, we think about story clues, things that the author has told us or included in pictures. We also think about our own background knowledge. What do we already know about the topic? We put these together and we can make an inference. Let's take a look at an example from a book we've read in the past, Wolfpack. In the book, the author tells me the pups are leaving their warm, cozy den for the very first time. I look at the picture and I see that the den is surrounded by dirt. I look at the insert and I can see this even more. Now I know from other books I've read about prairie dogs that dens are underground. So I can infer using the words and the pictures and my prior knowledge that a wolf's den is underground even though the author does not tell us directly in the text. Now our goal is to infer the author's message. But what is author's message? The author's message is the big idea or what the author is trying to tell the reader. Understanding the message can help you understand the story. Now, an author's message is more than just the facts in a book. In the book, Ape, the author tells us that each night she builds a nest out of branches to sleep on, then pulls down a palm frond to keep off the rain. This is a fact about an orangutan. It is not the author's message. In fact, we don't really get to the author's message until the very last few pages of the book. The author points out some negative effects that we or people have on great apes. He says, we're not rare like the rest of them though. We just can't stop changing things. We've changed the world so much we haven't left enough room for the other great apes, and we've hunted them for food or to keep as pets. The author also tells us, in some places though, we're trying to protect them now. We've set aside pieces of wild land where they can live their lives in peace, swinging and chomping, chattering and playing. So let's think about the story clues the author gave us. The author told us that we've hunted them for food or to keep as pets. The author also tells us we've changed the world so much there isn't enough room for other great apes. But then the author tells us that we've also set aside some wild places where the apes can live in peace. Remember, our goal is to infer the author's message in a nonfiction book. So these story clues are telling me that because of human activities, the apes are losing places to live, and there isn't as many apes left in the world as there used to be. Now, let's take that information and combine it with our background knowledge. I know that apes could become endangered or even extinct if humans don't change. I know that when there are only a few animals left in a species, they are called endangered. Let's put this information together to see if we can get the author's message. Think about the story clues, think about your background knowledge, and then make an inference. So the author, Martin Jenkins, cares about apes. I think his message is that people need to care for the environment and protect apes so they can survive. 
next, you're going to take a short quiz on a short story, or I should say a quiz on a short story. As you are reading the short story, remember to use clues from the story and your own background information to make an inference. This inference will help you to determine the author's message in a nonfiction book. Have fun, third graders.